Hey all happy mask Monday. Uh, today we're going to do something I've wanted to do for years, which is uh, customize this H3 skull to look more like a Dom Post Brown skull. Okay, so uh, as I said, we're going to make this uh, H3 skull a uh, Dom Post Brown skull. Um, so we talked about it before in like the very first episode of Mask Monday where we had the, the H3 masks and I kind of explained how this was originally just the Dom Post skull that was sculpted by Pat Newman. And when they originally came out in 67, they were cast in like a brown vinyl and then they would stipple an off-white color on top of that. And those masks are super rare and um, very, very expensive. Um, but we have this perfect uh, Dom Post skull right here that Trick or Treat Studios made for Halloween 3. I'm gonna do a really simple paint job on this, just gonna customize it to look uh, more like one of those brown skulls, basically. And the process is gonna be really simple. I'm just gonna um, mix up a latex base uh, color and spray it all over the skull and uh, let that dry. And then I'm gonna stipple an off-white on top. And then I might do a, like a light weathering. I'll kind of see what it looks like. Um, obviously, I haven't done this before, so I'm gonna kind of see how close I can get it just doing the stipple on top of the brown. But if I want it to look older, um, I'm probably gonna do a really light weathering job on it and then we'll seal it and that'll be it. So, like I said, uh, the first step is just gonna be giving this a nice brown base coat. Um, I'm gonna cut the tag off of here and then um, clean it up. So anyway, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just uh, clean the mask off. Um, and I've used this citric acid. This is just like citric acid mis mixed with water. And you can use this to clean off your mask. It's definitely what, what you wanna do if it's like a raw pull. Um, before you start painting. Um, but it's not super necessary for something like this. Um, but what, a big reason why you want to uh, clean the mask off is, is to get all the dirt off, but also it kind of opens the pores up um, and gets it ready to accept paint. And that's kind of one of the good things that the citric acid is for, but I don't want to put up a lot of obstacles, A, and B, I'm all out of citric acid. So I only have this for like my raw masks. So I'm just gonna clean this off with water, um, which, Again, this is all I used to do um, before I learned about the citric acid, and it, and it works just fine. So this is literally just water, just getting it like pretty wet. And then um, you can use like a rag. I don't have any rags laying around, so I had the sponge, so I don't see why I can't just use that. And I just want to take this moment too, to like I really, I hate the word rehaul, and I know that I've used it a lot. Like I've been guilty of using it, and and all that stuff. Um, but really, like, I prefer just like customization or just like customizing the mask. So I'm gonna turn this mask into, you know, I'm gonna customize it to look like a Dom Post Brown skull. I'm not sure exactly um, what color I'm gonna mix. I'll just kind of mix until I like it and kind of see. I want it to be like a darker brown because again, I, I want this mask to look old too. So I'm starting with a uh, dirt nap, which is basically just the like straight, it's kind of like a light brown. So I'm gonna start with that and then I'm gonna darken it up a little bit with Far Gone. I have, I have white and black here too. I don't even know if I'll end up using it or not, but you can obviously just use it to tint the shade up or tint the shade down. So you can see that's, if you can, um, pretty light. I want it to be darker than that. So rather than just going in with black, I kinda like this Far Gone more than the brown. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a, some Far Gone in this cup and then I'll kind of use this as my light brown to tint it up so I'm not wasting too much paint. Oops, that Far Gone is pretty much already the color I want it to be, but I know that it's gonna dry a little darker. Um, they all, pretty much it's always gonna dry like two shades uh, darker than, than what you put on. So uh, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna tint it up with just a little bit of this lighter brown. That's already slightly darker because I put some far gone in it already. You can see kind of, that's where that, mo it's mostly dirt nap right there. And then I mixed, um, I'm not sure about the ratios that I did, um, but I, you know, if you wanted to do this exact thing, I would start with far gone and then just start mixing the dirt nap into it until you're happy with it. Um, but I like that color, so that's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna, if it hasn't come out already, I don't know, when things are gonna come out, but I'm gonna do a video specifically on just how to, just like mixing consistencies. Um, so I won't get into too much detail with it, um, but this is distilled water, that's important. And then um, you get it to a little bit of a milky consistency, but I like it like thicker than, than milky consistency. You 
can see here kind of where it started to um, pool up. You want to avoid that. Um, a little bit's not going to be a big deal, but try to avoid this kind of shiny pooling stuff. So you'll see me, I like, I rotate the mask quite a bit. I'm like, you know, just squirting a little bit at a time. And uh, don't try to cover, like if you go over an area, don't try to finish it. Just do this in passes. So, um, I'm gonna let that dry for a couple minutes um, and then I'll hit it with the second coat. Um, and then in between like painting, you always wanna just flush it out with distilled water just so that latex doesn't cure, doesn't dry um, inside of all the like tubing and stuff in here. Cause then you're gonna get clogged. All right, we'll let that dry, um, and then we will stipple the like off-white onto it. Just in like the 30 sec, or like maybe one minute that it's been drying and I've been kind of moving around, it's already darkening up, so um, I don't know how much that reads or whatever, but um, it's always really important to remember that it's gonna dry darker every time. I'm grabbing Zombie Flesh Medium, and I'm gonna mix that into some white. Um, to get like an off-white kind of bone color. So this is obviously the color that I just mixed up, and then this is just straight white. Um, I still want this to look white, you know, I don't want it to be yellow. Um, but it's an off-white now because um, I want it to be kind of like an old bone look. So I'll just I'll just put this on, and if it's like if it's too white or whatever, or or if it's too yellow, then I'll just kind of adjust it and then uh, stipple that on top of that as well. But I think that this is a good starting place at least. So here's an important thing for stippling: um, you don't want to dilute the paint at all. So you're not going to mix distilled water into this. Um, you want it to just be just straight up latex paint. You do want to make sure it's like pretty dry before you start doing it. Um, but it's not as important as like if I was going to do a rub out on this, if I was going to spray this with ink and then clean it off, you'd really want to wait. Um, but it being kind of just fresh paint is fine for the, the stipple. So this is just like really cheap um, foam that's like the exact same consistency. I don't even know if I have any around here anymore because I stopped. I used to use like sponges and um, you know, like you use this latex paint and you stipple with it and this is so cheap. And I use this this like bed foam for a lot of stuff actually. Like if you're into mask making and all that, um, go out and buy some cheap bed foam because it's just like, you can use it for so much. I hardly ever throw it away. So I've got this like semi-large sponge now. And what you wanna do is, is pull it, squeeze it in so that you have this nice like round uh, edge and so you're not hitting all these edges. When I'm doing anything, but especially stippling because it's weird, I like to start like in the back or just like a less important spot that you're not going to see a lot of. Um, and again, just like with airbrushing, um, do this in passes. Don't try to finish this section. Just hit it with some paint and move on to a different section and you're going to come back and go over it. So uh, I just finished with like my, my initial pass um, and I'm gonna go over now and I'm gonna just highlight little spots. I already kind of started doing it a little bit, but like, um, again, these masks, like the ones that exist and you can see they're so old um, and I want it to look like that. Like I don't want it to look like a really fresh brand new one, but like I'm gonna go over the teeth a little bit and whiten those a little bit. I'm gonna get in this crevice, but where I'm pushing out. So you see the spot where it's kind of hard to get to. You don't wanna get it super bright. You want it to be darker because it's like that contour, but you wanna get a little bit in there. So like just kind of push up a bit and, and hit it that way. And then let's just be like really light with it. So you'll see here, this is pretty intense this little spot where I hit it too hard, but here it's pretty dark. So, um, but again, see it's kind of a little bit gray here. So I'm just 
Again, pushing up, I wanna get a little bit more. I wanna brighten up these teeth just a little bit, make this face really pop. This nose here, I don't wanna to try to just shove this sponge into there because it's gonna get so white all over everywhere on its way. I wanna push this up with my finger. It's the nice part about having it being a mask. Go in from the inside and push that up so that now that's the high point and I'm gonna hit it really, really lightly. So I'm honestly pretty happy with how this turned out. Um, I think if anything, maybe I went a little too heavy on the face because I really like this, this kind of faded out brown look to it right here. Okay, so we let this dry for like an hour or two. Um, my initial plan was to go in and, and weather it. Um, I don't think I want to do that here because I really like all the like the brown that's popping through But what I'm gonna try first is um, Just hitting it with the airbrush with black um, And just trying to just like darken this br these brown spots and these deep spots and like in here in the eyes And just try to like darken it and make it look a little weathered Then I don't run the risk of like wiping any paint off I don't run the risk of too much black getting in the details because I want that. I, I like this brown color I'm gonna dilute it pretty heavily so again, this is FW ink, just black. And I'm gonna thin it out substantially with alcohol. So you can see hopefully the difference here. So I've just been kind of just dusting this with the black and so See this side is a lot brighter. And I like that. I like this darker undertone here. It's all sealed up with Krylon matte finish, and um, that kind of gives it, kind of made it dulled out the spots where it was a little shiny from like the latex paint or whatever. Um, so that kind of helps it to look a little more vintage as well. Don't want to overdo it either, because you know with the, any kind of spray paint or whatever, like it will crack if you really kick it on. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm happy to have a brown skull in my collection now. Um, I'll put it up on the shelf and look at it for a while, and if I don't like it so much later on, then I'll just customize it some more. Okay, so that's gonna wrap up this week's Mask Monday. I uh, hope you enjoyed the repaint of the Dom Post skull. Uh, let me know in the comments if you think it looks anything like those old vinyl skulls, um, or maybe the chocolate skulls that came out later on. Um, hope you like it, I like it. Um, we'll see you next week for another Mask Monday. Like, share, subscribe, and visit us at nightmaretoys.com.